What's going on everybody? Today we're doing a masquerade style raven mask. Remember as always you can pick up the patterns and artwork for all my projects on my Etsy shop or my website. Links in the description down below. You can get the same patterns and artwork on my Patreon on a month to month basis. So have a look at that. Welcome back, let's just get this all cut out. It's pretty straightforward. All the pieces are very similar with slight variation. The grayed out area is where you are going to be gluing these pieces. This is the top part that needs to be glued to the back of some of the pieces. And you need to rough it up to make sure that the glue sets really nicely. Lonsdale Leather has once again been kind enough to sponsor this video. Make sure you check them out. I'm going to be using some 5 ounce Vegetan I picked up from them. It's great stuff. Once we've got all this cut out, it's time to trace it onto our leather and then cut that out. It's not a complicated pattern, but you know, it takes a little bit of time. I often get asked where I get these fabric weights from. They're extra heavy. My studio mate Levi over at Drawbridge Props makes them and they are indispensable for me. So you can get some fabric weights yourself that are usually a little lighter because while well, you're dealing with fabric, these have got some bulk to them. So maybe check out his Etsy store, Drawbridge Props. I'll put a link down below in the description and if I haven't, make sure you bug me. I'm a little bit forgetful. Nothing special here. Just tear through it really quick. It's really thin leather. I always make sure my knives are really sharp before I cut anything, but this stuff is like five and a half, six ounce. It cut like butter. I didn't really have to sharpen my knife at all again. Those little feather separation notches, looking back, because I'm going to bevel all these edges, I would have cut those notches after I beveled, because that way I'm not fighting right here, fighting those notches. So I would have beveled everything and then gone back and cut all my notches. Just a little heads up for you guys when you take on this project. Another thing I would recommend doing is when you are going to carve this piece, you should preemptively mark off where you're going to rough it up so you don't carve into where you're going to rough it up because I did that. It worked out fine in the end, but it wasn't perfect. It would have been better just to carve up to the spot instead of going all the way across like I'm going to do here and then rough up that edge or rough it up first and then carve it, whatever, either way. I wouldn't have cut all the way through like this. You'll just have a better bond and it'll be a more seamless edge between the two pieces. Even if you don't have any leather carving skills, I think just the general silhouette of this mask, dyed black, glued properly, will still give a very significant raven bird look. Uh, but if you've got some carving tools and you want to try a, a extremely easy project, or if you don't have any carving tools and you want to try a great first project, this would be it. A lot of very subtle curves and just some straight bevels to add depth. Again, you don't even need to bevel this really. You could just do the step where you're carving the lines, but everything helps it look a little better. Just like I talked about not carving your lines into the area where you're going to be roughing it up, I probably wouldn't have beveled either. Well, not probably. I wouldn't have beveled to where you're going to rough it up either. Here's my lazy die vat. I've only got one lazy die vat, and it's for black. I'm going to do both sides of everything really quick, let them dry, and then we're going to take them away and buff them up. This is another spot where I started to overthink things a little bit. For sure, you should put a finish on these projects. I would put a finish on it now and then I would rough everything up. I've hilariously had this little knife since Warcraft. Augusto Grassi, who was one of the armor supervisors on that show, used one and he just took a blade and wrapped some tape around it and gave it to me and I still have it. I've also got this one. Now because I carved into the spots where I should rough it up, using that little tiny blade was tough, but this worked out really well. And then I went over it again a little bit with the little blade. When I put a finish on this, I'm going to assemble everything, glue everything, and then spray gun it. And it works fine. But yes, I would put a finish on it before all this roughing up. Um, it's just, uh, you guys are most likely not going to be using a spray gun. You're going to be applying your finish with a sponge, so... 
I've been trying to find the perfect odorless contact cement. Um, this LePage that I'm going to use here, I wouldn't say is perfect, but it does the trick. I'm trying to avoid things like barge and more toxic stuff. I'm also roughing up the back a little bit here with the little blade. It does a good, pretty good job. And then I'm just going to put on a couple layers of that contact cement. Once that's done, we're going to press the pieces together and hammer it down. On a side note, you'll notice that there were holes on the pattern. Those are more like guidelines than anything else. Because you're gluing this together and curving it, I wouldn't put any holes in it until you've glued everything together. And then you can just pop your holes in. And now it's time to strategically glue everything together. You're going to mount the upper brow, and then we're going to hammer that down. Make sure everything rides along the same arc over the brow. And then we're going to attach the lower piece, or the first lower piece, to the beak. This is the one piece that's a little finicky, but it's really not that big a deal. You just want to bend the beak and make sure that the edge of the beak lines up with the edge of the lower piece. So it'll make sure everything curves for you by doing that. And because we have to curve it, and the awkwardness of how this is set up, we're going to hammer it over a little anvil. Makes it a lot easier. You could probably bend it around and hammer it just on a flat surface, but that was easier for me. And then we're going to glue the next layer onto the bottom here. Again, I wasn't really sure if I should do the bottom glued to the second piece first and then glue it to the beak or do this afterwards. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Uh, there, there might be a better order to it. This is the order I did it in. Once all that is glued, we need to use our anvil again. Hammer it while it's curved. And then we're going to line everything up and mark it with an awl. Because this is where we're going to punch through all four layers and put a rivet in. If your glue is strong enough, you can avoid the rivet. But I really figured why fuss around just put a rivet in it make it black you could even paint it a little bit paint it black it's a mask raid mask it's not like you're a real raven you can have a rivet in your mask speaking of ravens i'm gonna plug another artist right now you guys should check out feed the ravens uh i'll give you the etsy link down below um they do all sorts of really cool handcrafted artisan period viking saxon pottery and jewelry and all sorts of really cool stuff, so you guys should go check that out. Uh, feed the Ravens over on Etsy. Yeah, there will be a link in the description down below. Oh, hey, look at this. I solved my token hole problem. I'm going to link these in the description, too. They're just tiny little bottles. Somebody recommended them to me. If you're that person, make sure that you tell me all about it in the description about how smart you are. Here comes the finish that I thought you guys should do before assembly. I'm going to spray the back. I'm going to spray the front. You guys may want to glue a little felt on the back. I don't wear a lot of masks, so it might be nice to have a little felt bits glued for comfort. Could be something you do. Maybe. It's really great that Lonsdale has so many different kinds of rivets. These black ones are obviously perfect for a raven mask. So we're just throwing a couple rivets in there really quick. And then we're going to punch some holes for our lace. I'm just using some pretty narrow leather lace for this project. There's lots of different kinds of lace. I'm not going to tell you what kind of lace you need to use. Knot one in, slide it through, tie it on your face, really straightforward. Well there you have it everybody. I know everyone thinks that Halloween is cancelled, but you can always pick this mask up, build it. Have your own little Zoomoween with your friends. Go on Twitter. The, tw the tweeter. The tw what? Twitch? Uh, Twitch. Go on Twitch. Do some streaming. Well, there you have it, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you did. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future content. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.